In our last episode we have gone through Kepler's law. Now comes Newton, who was inspired to observe an apple falling from a tree. Inspiring from this Newton gave an explanation of terrestrial gravitation as well as of Kepler's laws. He stated that the moon is revolving in an orbit round the earth due to a centripetal force supplied by earth. Where f equals mv squared upon r. Where v is the speed of the moon. Given by v equals 2 pi r upon t. Where t equals 27.3 days. And r equals 3.84 times 10 to the power of 8 m. Putting the values in r equals 4 pi squared r squared upon rt gives a value 1.6 meters per square second which is much smaller than the value of acceleration due to gravity g 9.8 meters per square second on the surface of the earth arising also due to earth's gravitational attraction so what we see here is that the force due to Earth's gravity decreases as we move away from the center of Earth. Newton imagined force is inversely proportional to distance squared that is, proportional to 1 upon d squared also f also proportional to m, hence, f proportional m upon d squared. But force exerted onto each other is same by Newton's third law, hence, f proportional m into m upon d squared, or, f equals g m into m upon d squared, where g is universal constant of gravitation. Now the question is why is g is universal constant? What is its SI unit and dimensional formulae? We know, f equals g m 1 meter 2 upon d squared, Putting m1 equals m2 equals 1 meter d equals 1 meter therefore, f equals g1 times 1 upon 1 squared, hence f equals g so nature of g is a kind of a force between two unit masses unit distance apart anywhere in universe, therefore is universal by nature. We know, f equals gm1 meter 2 upon d squared. Putting m1 equals m2 equals 1 meter. d equals 1 meter. Therefore, f equals g1 times 1 upon 1 squared. Hence f equals g. So nature of g is a kind of a force between two unit masses unit distance apart anywhere in universe. Therefore is universal by nature. f equals g m1 meter 2 upon d squared. Therefore, g equals f d squared upon m 1 meter 2 putting dimensions of each involved g equals m l t minus 2 l squared upon m squared therefore dimension of g is m minus 1 l cube t minus 2 the earth can be considered to be made up of concentric spherical shells smallest one at the center and the largest one at its surface Question is how does G varies within, on the surface or outside the surface of Earth? As we know G on the surface of Earth is 9.8 meters per second square. Let acceleration on the surface of Earth of radius R is G. We have to find acceleration above the surface of Earth at a height h at p. Let it be G dash. Hence g dash equals gm upon r plus h squared g dash equals gm upon r squared 1 plus h upon r squared g dash equals gm upon r squared 1 plus h upon r squared replacing gm upon r squared equals g we get g dash equals g 1 minus 2 h upon r by binomial theorem or g dash equals g to g h upon r so when we move up the surface we can say acceleration due to gravity decreases by an amount 2 g h upon r let acceleration at a depth h down the surface of earth of radius r is g we have to find acceleration at p let it be g dash 
let the mass of earth at p is m hence g dash equals g m upon r minus h squared here replacing m equals v rho m equals 4 thirds pi r minus h cubed rho g dash equals g 4 thirds pi r minus h cubed rho upon r minus h squared g dash equals g 4 thirds pi r minus h rho equation 1 where m equals 4 thirds pi r cubed rho hence rho equals m 4 thirds pi r cubed putting rho in 1 we get g dash equals g 4 thirds pi r minus h m 4 thirds pi r cubed g dash equals g m r minus h r cubed g dash equals g m r 1 minus h r r cubed g dash equals g m r squared 1 minus h r replacing g m r squared by g we get g dash equals g 1 minus h r or g dash equals g minus g h r means acceleration due to gravity deep down the earth decreases by an amount g h r 